Welcome to this overview of PXF Bandpass. So I have this image here that I would like to track. I want to track the far background, the sky area, but there's not much to track here. So if I put a tracker on this, it will fail most likely. So let's try it. If I try to get whatever detail I have in here and track it, it just doesn't want to go. <laughs> It goes for a few frames and then it stops and it's just giving me a bouncy track here. This is useless. So I need to find a way to enhance the detail that's in the plate. So let's bring out a band pass. Let's connect it to our image. And the way band pass works is you highlight a certain band of frequencies. So the very small stuff usually is camera noise and the big stuff, the low frequency stuff, is usually lighting variations, nothing very useful for tracking. So the mid frequencies are the ones we want to enhance. So first we're going to amp up the gain quite a bit because this is a really flat image. I'm going to make the gain really big here. So now you can see all the camera noise showing up. That's the high frequency stuff. So we need to filter that out with the small blur, blur amount one, and we're going to crank that up just enough to get rid of our noise and our grain. Now we are left with a very narrow band because this is the only part that we're enhancing is between those two sliders. So we don't have enough detail here. So let's bring up the blur amount two, the big blur bigger that way. And then we can crank the gain even more. And now you can see we start to have some stuff here. So compare with the original where there's barely anything to see. Now we actually have stuff here and it's actually moving with the background. So this is what we want. We want to enhance the stuff that's in there for the tracker to hook onto it. So let's try that again. So I'm going to put my tracker on that instead. a little bit bigger here we go and now we're tracking the background easily so this is much easier to track compared to the original plate so i'm pretty happy with this so this is tracking beautifully so let's go through the knobs here so by default uh, bandpass will convert to log via a, a, a linear to cineon conversion beforehand you can skip it by picking linear here you might end up with more detail, but usually Cineon is pretty good. It's a good balance of contrast and detail. The small blur is the stuff we want to kill in the high frequencies. So everything that's smaller than 15 pixels will get filtered out. The big blur is everything we want to kill in the low frequencies, the big stuff. So everything bigger than 63 uh, pixels will be killed. The gain is how much we want to enhance. So uh, more gain equals more detail but if you have too much then it becomes a big mush and you can't track anymore saturation will combine all three channels together which usually is a good idea for tracker if you set it uh, to one then you're gonna have a band pass that's different on all three channels red green and blue offset darks will recenter the result so you can have stuff that's darker than the average and brighter than the average you can of course get only the bright stuff or only the dark stuff by switching offset darks this is pretty niche, I rarely touch that control. Uh, we have now pre and post clamps. So sometimes you might have a negative values, one pixel that's negative, and it will create chaos with the big blurs you have here. So now we can pre clamp our values. You can also pre clamp the really bright stuff. If you have infs or really, really hot pixels, you can clamp the values from zero to one before the bandpass and you also have post clamps so now the values coming out of bandpass will be clamped to zero and one by default you can of course turn that off uh, this is usually to help out with the tracker you can mix with the original uh, plate uh, obviously just like most new nodes so if you mix back to the original and we have a mask input so if you need to bandpass only some region of your image this is a very edge case now we can mask the bandpass and only bandpass one area of your image so there you go that was an overview of pxf bandpass i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video goodbye